yet another, a third balloon or unidentified object in this case was taken down, this time today, Saturday afternoon, over the Yukon Territory of Canada. So we had the, the one, a balloon, with a big truss structure underneath it, and giant solar rays that was taken down over South Carolina that we know was from China. An unidentified car-sized object was taken out over Alaska, off, uh, off the waters of Alaska. Now, a third one, which apparently transited over northern Alaska, was taken down over the Yukon Territory in Canada, over the Yukon. This was at the request of Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. He called uh, Joe Biden and consulted with him about this. They both agreed to take it down. And the U.S. F-22 once again got exercised uh, so far, the only thing these F-22s have ever taken down is balloons. But this is the third one taken down by an F-22 within just a few days. In fact, we've taken two down in just the last two days. And right now, there's yet a report of another, another balloon, again, over Montana. And it's nighttime. Uh, so, guys, this is getting really, really strange. A lot of stuff is happening here. And so we're going to talk about this for a few minutes. So, I will read you a statement about this balloon taken down as tweeted by Justin Trudeau primarily. <clears throat> he said to follow it, I ordered the takedown of an unidentified object. Funny how they don't put the word flying in there, though it's flying, right? <laughs> that violated Canadian airspace. And he tweeted this out. And he said, shot down uh, the, uh, he said, NORAD command, shot down the object over the Yukon. Uh, Canadian and U.S. aircraft were scrambled and a U.S. F-22 fired at the object. I spoke with President Biden this afternoon. Canadian forces will now recover and analyze the wreckage of the object. Thank you to NORAD for keeping the watch over North America. That's what Trudeau added. So, guys, uh, this is quite a saga of events here. Um, it was further added by the U.S. State Department that they confirmed this. Uh, let's see. And... Uh, uh, Pentagon Press Secretary Brigadier General Pat Ryder said in a statement, as Canadian authorities conduct recovery operations to help learn more about the object, the Federal Bureau of Investigation will be working closely with the uh, Royal Canadian, Canadian Mounted Police. FBI, I thought the FBI's jurisdiction was inside the country. All those things did go over Canada, I mean, over Alaska. And CIA was outside the country. I don't know. So, you know, it's kind of strange how these things are fitting together. So, um, yeah, and Lloyd Austin, Secretary of Defense, has said that uh, we'll always defend the sovereignty, our sovereignty together, something like that, you know. So, yeah, uh, this is getting strange, guys. It's getting highly strange. And, you know, guys, again, they're having Arctic conditions up there. It's like uh, in the up in Yukon, it's like minus 20 right now, supposedly. So uh, it might be hampering recovery operations somewhat, but I remember when I would call that a heat wave back when I was stationed at Fort Greeley. <laughs> so uh, real quick, guys. Let's just chat about this a minute. I've done videos already, which I talked about in the show just uh, yesterday. I did a video I posted where I showed you the threat of a balloon, how, how balloons you could absolutely take this country down with EMPs, with just balloons. I showed how you could augment that and make that threat even worse by doing what I did 25 years ago and attaching rockets to these balloons, or how they, you could use these uh hypersonic top glide vehicles that there's already tested the chinese have already tested underneath balloons as drop vehicles which wouldn't go hypersonic if they didn't have propulsion on but they would go supersonic which would be plenty fast and get a lot of cross range to penetrate further inland to uh have a mp a local associate so a localized mp an mp that would still cover something well over uh 400 miles depending on the altitude of the uh glide object when it detonated you know at the 30 kilometers uh, which is 18.64 uh, miles up, you would have a coverage of 442 miles radius underneath you. That's a huge area. And uh, the EMP super weapon would put out a devastating uh, EMP over an area that was within its line of sight for RF. Guys, this is this is serious, but, 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 the but, the big but is this. It all depends on the size of the balloon, really. You can't, have a device like that on a balloon the size of a car, like the one taken down yesterday. Um, see, that's really strange. Now, that balloon was arguably in aviation airspace at 40,000 feet, as is reportedly the one that's over Montana now. That's really too low for a balloon. 
you are in aviation space at that point. And a balloon in aviation space should have been taken down by its own flight controls and therefore it could be ruled a derelict balloon, a threat to aviation, and legitimately taken down. But we should have some way of taking them down besides using expensive sidewinder missiles. That's a bit much. Balloons are pretty easy to pop, by the way. Once you pop it, uh, it's coming down. <laughs> I say pop. You make some holes in it. If it's polyethylene, you make holes. And if it's a latex balloon, yeah, you pop it. So uh, it just depends on what it's made out of. And yeah, some scientific balloons are latex, but they usually go up all the way to the top and pop on their own. Because they ascend, ascend, ascend until they, they just get so big they can't stand the pressure and they go pop. So these are probably not latex balloons because they are staying at uh, float to altitude. A float altitude of 40,000 feet is pretty darn low for one of these. So spy balloons, maybe. Uh, you could put a decent Intel package, uh, a little one on one that's the size of a car, but you're not putting an EMP device. And probably not even your best Intel device. Here's what I worry about. Maybe they are trying. Maybe, of course, somebody mentioned something about a weather balloon that got away from the Aleutian Islands. <laughs> I heard a, a, some discussion about that yesterday. I don't know. It got, uh, we may be a little trigger happy right now. I hope we're not taking down legitimate scientific balloons while these balloons should be following notums, notice to airmen. So you'd have some notion of what it is and where it is. Uh, and if they're big enough, they should have their own packages on board that will let you know what it is, where it is. But all that said, all this should be size dependent in size per altitude. As you go up the size, we get bigger for carrying a given, a given weight. And so we should be looking at weights that might carry something that could truly threaten us for us to be worried about an EMP type device. President Biden, apparently, he kind of just wrote this off. Hey, there's no threat uh, in the statement he made just in the last day or two. Um, but, you know, no, that's not the case. But uh, a blame the size of a car, <laughs> I, I have a hard time seeing that uh, as being a serious threat. What I worry about is this. It's hot. Not only we might we be over trigger happy, I think that's the case, but uh, we do need to be resolute and pay close attention to monitor vigilantly always balloons that could actually carry an EMP device. That we should double down on and not ever give up on. What I'm really afraid of here is that somebody or somebody's will just start throwing a lot of little indiscriminate balloons at us, just junk little balloons, until we just get tired of it. Then we'll just quit watching. Ah, this is nothing. We'll quit watching. And then the party begins, the real balloon party. So if that's not going to be a good party for us, we're talking that's where we might get an EMP attack. Uh, it's somewhere down the road. Uh, you know, they throw so many at us, it becomes a wolf, crying wolf. We get tired of it. We just start ignoring it. Maybe that's what they're trying to do here by, if they're sending a lot of these planes up. I don't know, guys. It's not a pretty picture. Uh, it's not a pretty picture if we overreact. It's not a pretty picture if we allow ourselves to get uh, dulled to what could be a real threat. Uh, you know, I almost want to joke about shooting down something the size of a car and uh, taking down these so-called unidentified objects. And of course, you're ignoring the fact they're flying. So essentially, like the Russians a few weeks ago uh, said they shot down a UFO. <laughs> well, suddenly now we've shot down two unidentified objects, which were flying. Nobody called them UFOs. <laughs> well, te technically, an uh, object that's flying that's unidentified is a UFO. Well, no matter what it is, it could be a paper bag. <laughs> so. I've seen paper bags fly at altitude, by the way, especially black plastic bags in the summertime get overheated and get caught up in a whirlwind. Uh, but they're not going to fly too high, I wouldn't think. But uh, yeah, I've seen some odd things, guys. So uh, yeah, I'm laughing about the bag joke and, and, and being over responsive. That is kind of funny, but the blends themselves, uh, the idea that we have EMP weapons, that's not funny. That is really serious. And we've got to not lose focus on that. We've got to be able to calibrate where our focus belongs in this threat matrix. We got to really focus down what is the threat? Where is it? And that's what we got to double down on. And it's going to be dependent on the size of the balloon. That size of that balloon, and if we're given altitudes, it's going to go because you need more and more size on that balloon to displace enough air because the air density goes down rapidly as you go up in the altitude. So it takes more size to carry the same weight the higher you go maybe 16 cubic foot per pound, you know, or something on the order, you know, more than that. So uh, as you really get up there, it's a lot of volume of air it's needed to displace a payload. So you got to keep that in mind. It also counts the weight of the balloon as part of it, and even the heat inside are all part of that figuring. I mean, what, what, what is buoyancy? It's the, 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 the air displaced, the, 
the weight of the air displaced has to be greater than what you're carrying in your whole package system for it to float or to equal it for it to float. That's the float altitude where they equal each other, equalize. If you have a float altitude, some balloons, you know, they're, they're set where they don't really have a fault out, float out to just go up and if for latex until they pop or if they're a zero pressure balloon, they have vent tubes that will vent excess heat on to keep them from busting. Super pressure balloons, it's gotta be designed real carefully for a float altitude though. And it, they seem to be of that ilk, which is not inconsequential. It takes a little bit of engineering to, to derive that, but not, not too much, it's doable. So guys, this is a potential threat. The balloons themselves are a threat, especially if they're in the size range to carry these. I'm working up a white paper right now on this topic, but I just want to bring this up because it's suddenly just peppering the news. It just don't stop. And it may be that they're, 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 they've decided just to keep tossing these things at us just till we get our senses dulled to the whole thing because it'll just be inconsequential little party balloons or whatever, just one after another after another. And finally, we'll decide what are we doing and we'll just ignore it. I hope that don't happen, but I also hope that we don't just take down anything and everything uh, willy-nilly without taking into account, could it really pose a threat? And what is there's something over Montana right now? And it may be, and it also could be, <clears throat> we may be on the precipice of something. So what is, are they just trying us? Are, these, uh, are they trying to see what we're going to respond to? Are they trying to wear us down, dull us out? Or are we at the advent of something? You tell me. Let me know what you think in the notes below. <laughs> All right, my friends. Keep your eyes wide open and head on a swivel. The times we're in are trying. A lot of stuff is happening. This is a near space uh, area. Uh, it, 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 you know, once you get above most of the atmosphere, 20 miles now for balloons that float 20 miles, like all balloons I flew, you're over 99% of the atmosphere. This is called near space. That's why this is a space and defense oriented topic. It fits both realms. So my friends, be vigilant and just stay aware. You know, hopefully all this just blows over, <laughs> which is what a balloon would do, right? But we do need to be resolute and keep our senses up, eyes wide open, head on a swivel. And with that, I'm going to say, thank you all for watching. Oh, yeah, be sure to subscribe, bang the notification bell, and click all. And, yeah, this might be a good time to prep to get ready. So check uh, prepwithgreg.com for long-term food storage. We got a special deal there. You can click on the My Patient Supply logo, and it'll take you into all of the kind of prepping supplies uh, that you can look at, water filtration, air, all kind of stuff. So check it out. With that, I'm going to say thank you for watching, and Greg out.